Good morning, church. And welcome to worship on this rather sticky Sunday morning. Great to have you here as we share together. Special welcome to all who are visiting with us today, or those who might be here for the very first time. A very special welcome to my friends Bill and Lola, who are here for Rips Rich. Great to have you with us. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. In this important time of waiting and preparing for Christmas, we hope and pray for peace. Peace in our world, peace in our homes, peace in our hearts. And we look to the candle with today reminding us Christ's peace is with us. Last Sunday, we sang a simple song entitled Light One Candle for Hope. And one of the verses is Light One Candle for Peace. I invite you to stand with me as you are able. Let us sing together Light One Candle.
Through that little baby, he showed us our worth. It's a pretty good idea. This piece on Earth. joy and satisfaction in all sorts of places. But we're reminded that our peace is in Christ. Let's pray for our children and for their teachers as they prepare to go to their special time this morning. Loving Lord God, we thank you for your gift of peace. We pray that we may know your peace in our hearts. And we pray especially for our children this morning as they share and learn that they will grow in this gift of your peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, for those who are leaving us now, look forward to seeing you in morning tea time. <coughs> Let's continue in our expression of worship to God as we come before the new prayer. Thanks again. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the time of our bed, the time that we remember that you came to be with us. You, Father, sent your Son. And we thank you. Oh, Father, we thank you for the plan that you had in sending Jesus to be amongst us. It's part of the plan for the salvation of the whole world. Lord, Christmas is just a part of the Easter story the beginning of the, the Easter story, the beginning of your plan to save mankind. And we are so grateful, Father, you are such a loving and amazing God that you would have this plan to save all of us, all of mankind. Father, as we, we look at you, we look at your greatness and your majesty and your power, and your great love and compassion, we are so aware of our shortcomings. We are so aware that even as we prepare, <coughs> excuse me, from, for the birth of your son, even as we go through the season of Advent, our eyes are not on you, they are on the preparations and the busyness and the stress and the shopping and Father help us to remember, help us to keep our eyes on you. Lord we confess that many times we don't look to you. Our eyes are on ourselves, on our selfishness and our self-focus. Father we confess these things to you this morning we ask your forgiveness. Keep us close to you, Father. Keep our eyes upon you. As we prepare for the birth of your son, help us to keep our eyes on your story, your being amongst us, your advent. And Lord, we pray for your power amongst us as, as we go through this time. In Jesus' name. As an extension of that prayer, let us stand and sing together, open the channel of your peace.
peace of the Lord be always with you. And I invite you now to share that word of peace with one another this morning. A lot. Tell us more. Okay, hopefully you've all got a, um, a scroll. If you don't, let us know we ran out, so let us do know about that. Um, so, it's all there, Crop Group Breakup, uh, Thursdays, the Ultra Committee Meetings, Saturday, uh, Paper Crafters, um, Tuesday as a Church Council Meeting, and then on the uh, 21st is our Fellowship Group uh, Breakup 2. Um, and then the op shop closes, as we know, over Christmas time the op shop closes and it's the time for doing some work in the op shop to clean the floors and things like that. So if you want to help out, when, um, is there a help out day, John, do you know, for when we... 21st. Okay. Right. Okay, so if you'd like to help out with that on the 21st. And in terms of our church services, um, I want to particularly mention, well, I better mention carols next week. Everybody's ready for carols next week, correct? Yes. Okay. At 6 p.m. start um, in the back. It can be a great time. 5.30 for sausage. Oh, 5.30 for a sausage. So if you want a sausage, come at 5.30. Um, <laughs> and then we kick off at 6. Okay. Uh, then on Christmas Eve, we, we don't come on Christmas Eve expecting to sit in rows like this, please. Christmas Eve, which is Sunday, it's a Sunday morning, it's a cafe church type of uh, Christmas, Christmas Eve. It's going to be a special time. The end. Please. Just talking about those services, we do have invitations out now. Um, there's only a few that I can find this morning, so if you need some more, please let us know and we'll run some off. We would very much love you to take these and distribute them as much as you can, invite as many people as you can. Do a letterbox drop if you feel that you can, that would be great. Um, and also for Cafe Church, we love to have our yummy morning teas for Cafe Church, so if you can help out with that with some baking, if you could see me, that would be fantastic. Um, we also have um, posters for the Christmas carols. So if any of you are able to distribute those posters in some of the shops around Montreal, that would be awesome as well. Thanks. Okay, so if you're going to take a poster, take it today, because it's next week. So. Okay, we have um, Christmas bowl appeal. There's a desk at the back there, take it at the back there with um, the Christmas bowl and information on it um, and a box for donations. Uh, Christmas Bowl is well how that, that those funds go out to help the United, uh, United Church's uh, activities in the community. Then there's the Uniting World. There's still a few goats left. Um, and I think we have a video on that, don't we? Um, and there's some Christmas cards as well. So $15 for a pack of Christmas cards. There's a farming cabinet there, there's a 
a table, if you want a table there. So if, if you want to, after the church service, just have a wander through and see if there's anything there that you're interested in. Uh, one of the things I did find yesterday in there is some uh, documents from way back when. Um, the, actually, the documents on the Kindy, when we had the Kindy here. If you are interested in those archives, please let me know, and um, they're available, they're being stored in the bank building at the moment. So, lots happening right now. Um, I also want to say one thing about our, our craft ministry. I was given a note this morning about how uh, the, the craft ministry here, you know the craft, craft min meets on Tuesday? Um, there's some significant donations that the craft group is making to four, I would like to outline. One is the Endometriotis Australia, there's a donation going to them. Uh, the MICA project for the homeless, for those of you who are familiar with that. Uh, the Lions Club of Tambourine Mountain, they have, uh, uh, for breast, breast cancer patients, they have a program. And then the Sanctuary for Women and Children, um, it's called Retreat for Kids. That money is going to them. So isn't it great that a craft group is contributing to those community uh, activities? I think that that's, you know, the Monterey United Church is doing some significant stuff. Uh, that's just great. Now, have I missed any announcements? I probably have. Anybody have another announcement? Please speak up. Oh, 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 we're doing the goats. Ha ha, goats. This is today. And this family. They live in Indonesia, and their lives are pretty tough. These are their goats. They eat a lot. They poo a lot. Their poo helps coffee plants grow. And they can sell the goats and the coffee at the markets. That means the land needs money for school, food, and medicine. More families need goats. You can help buy a goat gift today from everythingincommon.com.au. <laughs> they do a good job of those videos. Now it's time for our offering. So for those of you who have had to take the offering, I will take that up. Um, we're going to actually uh, have, have a sing first, well, during during that that time. Um, but this. Uh, um, then commit this to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just do thank you for the bounteous um, gifts that we do have and the, the, the opportunities we have living here in Australia. We thank you for that. And Lord, we just pr pray for um, this, this offering and uh, that it would be used for your purposes. In Jesus' name. Okay, Lorna's going to come around with the offering bags and then we'll um, sing. While that happens, we're going to be singing while shepherds watch. Thanks, Brian. Remain seated as we sing. Thank you. 
came for the work in the Metropolitan Life Church. I ask that you bless these two years. Amen.
Peace in the preparation. You know, we might feel relatively peaceful most of the year, but for many, as we approach Christmas, there is this anxiety that builds. There is this tension, the pressure of having to get to this social event or that social event or having people at your place. The busyness of parties, of buying presents, of trying to make everything just right. And you know that there are those within the family who will go with the flow and there are others who will get antsy if things don't go right. That might be you or me. In this season of preparation, we need, we need the gift of peace. And it's not by accident that over the course of the four Sundays of Advent, we focus on hope, peace, joy, and love. They're the four themes that precede our Christmas celebration. And I want to share a little bit with you about the interconnectedness of these words. Thanks, peace. Thanks, Pete. Hope and peace. When we have hope, there is a sense of peace that comes with that. When we're feeling hopeless or helpless in a particular situation, our anxiety levels rise, the tension builds, hope is important. Our hope is in Christ and it is the peace of Christ that God gives to us. Joy and peace. When we experience peace, it's then that we're able to express joy. When there is a sense that things are okay, we can begin to enjoy the good things, the blessings all around us. The gift of family, the gift of friends, the gift of our church family, neighbours, those that we may be mingling with over this Christmas season. Peace hopefully leads to that expression of joy. And when we know that we are loved, truly loved and accepted for who we are, there is an incredible sense of peace that comes with that. And while we know that we are loved by family members and friends, the incredible, inexplicable love that we experience from God is all-consuming. And it is transforming of who we are. Not only as people who are loved are we able to love in return, but we are able to experience the very depth of that gift of peace that Christ offers to us. Well, let's move to the next slide. Sometimes we become anxious. And then we let that ferment a little bit. And we become worried. And we stoke the fire a bit more. And we become distraught. At some point, in fact at any point along this continuum, we can choose peace. Do we have the capacity to do that? Do we have the will to choose peace? Do we get so caught up in the milestone of the worry and concern that we might have that we lose sight and we lose our grip on this capacity for experiencing peace? And so this morning I want to remind us, peace is a choice. Just as we might choose to feel anxious, worried or even destroyed, at some point along that line, as we move towards despair, we can stop and say, God, I'm feeling anxious about this. God, I'm worried about it. God, I've come to the end of myself and I don't know how to cope with this. Wherever we might be, that we would pause and pray. Ever-present God. 
feel me with your peace. God, lower the temperature of the anxiety in my Restore to me that peace that is beyond comprehension. And I want to tell you something that is a deep truth. Peace, with regard to human wisdom and explanation, is beyond the capacity of even the greatest philosopher to explain. How could someone experience peace in the midst of the most destructive and despairing situation? Only Christ. Only Christ can bring that gift of peace in the midst of all the turmoil that might be swirling around us. It is inexplicable. We don't need to be able to explain it or even comprehend it. We simply need to grasp it, believe it. The next one, thanks, Peter. So I've talked about anxiety being a source of uh, disturbing our peace. The other thing might be becoming irritated. Irritated with someone or some circumstance, something that's unfolding. And we allow the irritation to build and we become angry. And then we get really mad. We become enraged about what this person has done or said or the circumstances, what's unfolded before us. And again, I say, we have a choice. We can choose to be irritated or to allow that to ferment and fester that we become angry and stoke the fire a bit more until we become enraged, so consumed, filled with anger about whatever the situation might be at any point along that path. We have the opportunity to choose peace. God, this is disturbing me. My feathers have been ruffled. I've been rubbed up the wrong way about what's been done or said. Lord, give me your peace. Lord, it's all out of control at this stage. I'm so flame and angry. God, God, help me just to pause. Help me just to stop. Is this the end of the world? No, not really. Help me put everything back into perspective. And even while I'm struggling to get everything back into perspective, give me peace. Give me peace. Now, it might be that we experience the disruption of our peace through anxiety or irritation. But then there's this dimension of standing up for others that they may experience peace. Thanks, Pete. It begins with advocating. We might simply stand up for someone and say to another, just back off, give them some space. Give them some time just to work it through. And that's advocating for the one for whom we might have concern. And that might escalate. Uh, the advocating's not working, the subtle approach just ain't having any effect. Stop that. Go to your room. Have some time out. Let's just take a break. We need to do things differently here. This is not the way we're going to resolve it. Demanding that an end point be reached. And it might seem quite ironic, counterintuitive, that there may well be times when we have to fight for peace. Part of the argument that has been given by the Israeli government is that they are fighting for long term peace in their region. There are those who disagree and there are those who agree. In the context of family and domestic violence, we may need to fight for peace, for resolution. Circumstances that demand our action, that we may advocate, that we may demand, that we might even fight for peace. 
peace is why things peak. I've mentioned that we have the opportunity to choose peace. And I want to tell you that experiencing peace begins and is sustained by prayer. It's a recognition of the imminence of God's presence for us. God's peace will all consume presence. And so when we choose to break that cycle of aggravation, irritation, choose to break that cycle of anxiety and worry, we choose peace. And then we need to be open to receive this gift. My mother is a very godly woman. But one of the things that she has struggled with has been becoming anxious about things. Now, when I left home after finishing grade 12 and moving to Gatton Agricultural College, she was almost beside herself that she wasn't there with me every day just to keep an eye on me. And I can't begin to imagine the worry that her and dad experienced as I went out into the wide world. But one of the things that she learned and that she taught me, is it's all very well to pray to God, Lord, take control of this situation. Give me peace around this point of aggravation or anxiety. But she said time and again, I find myself snatching it back from God and wanting to do some more worrying about it all. Wanting to get all head up about it again. And prayer can be like that, can't it? God, please help me in this situation. Please, please take the struggle from me. Help me to experience your peace. And then we find ourselves brooding, mulling, and ruminating over that issue. And we find ourselves taking that concern back from the Lord and regurgitating it all again. When we hand it over to the Lord in prayer, that we would leave it with God and not snatch it back. Instead, that we would receive that gift of peace rather than taking back the source of worry. In fact, that we would receive this gift of peace to the very depth of our being, to that extent that we would embody peace. Have you ever felt just the most incredible experience of bliss and peace where you didn't have a care in the world. Perhaps you're at the beach. Perhaps you're bushwalking on a mountaintop overlooking the grandeur of all of God's creation. Perhaps you just had a spa or a massage or, or something that had been physically releasing the stress from your body. Maybe been immersed in prayer for a period of time. Just that very real sense of being at peace. Being enveloped in the very presence of God. That you yourself were actually embodying peace of Christ. Well, I hope that it happens for you at least from time to time. But how do we cultivate that to be something more sustained, something more frequent in our lives? What patterns of behaviour do we need to stop and change in order to be someone who embodies the peace of Christ, moment by moment and day by day? They're the things that we need to address. And we will take some time over this coming week and say, Lord, now about this, I know we've had conversations about this before, but I really need to deal with this, Lord. Help me. Help me to cast these things aside that are aggravations, that are disturbances, that steal your peace away from choose peace, we receive it as a gift, and as disciples of Jesus Christ, we seek to embody that very peace. 
that then enables us to share these things with people. In the words that we speak with others, in our actions, that we would be peacemakers, that we would be bearers of that peace of Christ in our relationships with one another. Even more than that, that we might be proclaimers of peace. If someone might ask, why are you so peaceful? Why are you so calm in the midst of what's happening? God has given me his peace, we might say. Just gently and humbly, we might declare that source of peace. We wouldn't be shy or embarrassed. And this is the very nature of the prophetic book of Isaiah and the part that we read. Peace is coming. It's a proclamation that God will bring comfort to his people. Out of all of the suffering that they had experienced, the consequences of their sin, the pain and the suffering are coming to an end. The time of blessing is near. I will send one who will bring peace. Who will bring peace on this earth. And ahead of that one will come one declaring the peace bearer. And in Mark's Gospel, we read of John the Baptist preparing the way. Now I love that image of the valleys being filled and the mountains being low, that the rough path be made smooth. There's still need assistance there. Thank you. Someone can do provide assistance. We'll just pause for a moment while the um, is made comfortable. Let's pray for Dell and for those who are caring for her at this time. Oh, loving Lord God, we pray for Dell that you would minister your love and your healing to her. God, surround her and fill you with fill her with your peaceful presence in the midst of this turn that she's experiencing. God, we pray for those who are caring for her. Lord, thank you that they are able to act quickly effectively and efficiently. God, we pray for that discernment with regard to the calling of the ambulance and for the paramedics arriving in, in good time. For Dale and for Jan, Lord, we surround them with our love at this time in Jesus' name. Those of you who were not with us just a couple of weeks ago, um, experienced a, a similar situation and um, while Dell's being cared for there, we'll continue on with doing what we need to do. If, uh, if you simply need to be still and in prayer for Dell, rather than listening to me, that's okay. You just, you just do that. And so the proclamation that there would be one who would come who would precede the Messiah. And he made the way. In the wilderness he proclaimed the message of repentance. That just as God's people in Isaiah's time were required to repent and return to God. So the people preceding the birth of Jesus were called to repentance. Before the ministry of Jesus began, the ministry of John was being undertaken, preparing the way. And John was faithful in proclaiming that Jesus would come. One who would baptize not with water, but with the Spirit. One who would transform lives. Now John himself, as the description of Mark gives us looked a bit of a wild character. Clothing of camel's hair, eating wild locusts and honey. 
It would have been a sight to behold. I'm not sure that John in himself would have been attracting to people. But it was the truth he proclaimed that drew the people to him. Sometimes we might be shy about declaring the truth of Jesus to our family members, to our friends. But to simply identify that Jesus is the source of our peace is a proclamation and an invitation that others too would find their peace in Jesus Christ. I mentioned before that experiencing peace begins and is sustained by prayer. Prayer for ourselves, prayer for others. And we know only too well that in the global picture at this point in time, there is a, a hard cry from humanity for peace, for the cessation of war and conflict. Even peace within our homes where there's domestic violence and abuse taking place. Let us be praying for peace. Peace in our own hearts. Peace in the lives of those around us. And peace in our world. In the name of Christ. Amen. A lovely father and daughter in America have produced quite a number of recordings of, uh, of songs of inspiration. And here's one of their songs with regard to peace, that our peace is in Christ.
There is peace in Christ. Let there be peace on earth, is our heart cry. Let us pray. Please don't close your eyes as we pray this morning because there are images on the screen. There are no spoken words to this prayer, just some written words and explanation and some pictures. And we'll just move through these uh, slowly that you will have the opportunity to pray for these circumstances. Thanks. of Christ we pray. Amen. I want to conclude our time of worship together this morning with the singing of the beautiful carol. Angels from the realms of glory, please stand with me as you are able to let us declare to the world the birth of our Saviour.
And now may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ fill your hearts to overflowing, empower and equip you for the days ahead, that in the midst of the busyness, any tensions that might rise, that you would know God's precious gift of peace. And loving Lord God, we thank you for Del. We thank you for your hand of restoration that's been upon her this morning. We pray for her well-being. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Morning tea is now served.